Hold on. Yo, what's up with your boys, man? It's your boy, Quatemotzin, back again with another video. And today, you know, it's just a continuation of what we already doing uh, yesterday. All right, we're going to read more about men's haircut and styling. All right. So uh, let's get started. All right. Let's not even waste time because we don't want to go over the two hour mark. But that's what it is, man. Now, let me see and let me make sure that I have my chat here in place. Um, I might have an audience today. If you guys can see me, say hello on the chat, please. Say hello in the chat if you're here so I can see y'all. But anyway, all right, we're going we're gonna to read today like we did last time. All right. We're going to open our Milady textbook real quick. Uh, oh, wow. Look, haircut templates. Wow, that's nice. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and let me see, bro. Got it, got it, got it. Open up the textbook right here. Chat, chat. Are you guys here? Say something in the chat if you're here. For real, for real. I want to know. Top chat. Live chat. Come on. Bro, there's no one on the chat? No viewers? I I guess so. No viewers? The only reason why I'm saying this is because I told my little sister that I'm live streaming right now. I'm going live. And I told her, hey, chat with me. Have an interaction with me. So that's why I'm, I'm saying no one in the chat. No one in the chat. Come on now, bro. Say something. Put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Princess Bree says hi. Hey, Princess Bree. How are you? How are you doing? How's everything going? Good? Good. And you? Good, 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 good. Thank you for coming today. It's going to be a wonderful show. I don't think you have to stay here the whole time. But I appreciate you coming and saying hello. All right. Now we're going to continue with the video. Like I said. Now we're on the textbook. Okay. We were. Let's see where we ended off. We were at page 382 when we started. Uh. Let me see. We were somewhere around here. We were somewhere around here. But let it load, man. Okay, I haven't seen this part. I haven't read about that part either. All right, let me see. Yo, this is a long chapter. Look at this. That's chapter 13. Oh, that's shaving. We already did that. Damn, it has a bunch of tutorials. This is chapter... Okay, this is the one we're at. Men's haircut and styling, all right? This is exactly where we're at. So we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. And this is the last thing I remember reading. The parietal ridge. So now we're here tapering and blending areas. Let me just make sure that I'm still recording myself. I'm still there. All right. So tapering and blending areas. All right. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. Tapering and blending areas. Taper or tapering is the action of gradually increasing the length of the hair from one point on the head to another without any lines of demarcation such as gaps or steps. The primary tapering areas of a cut are determined by the style. For example, in a standard taper cut, gradual tapering occurs from the hairline through the back and side sections up to the top. In the case of a bald fade, most of the tapering takes place around the parietal ridge. Tapering and blending areas refer to the sections or levels within the haircut where transitions between hair lengths occur. Clients often describe their desired styles in terms of length using such words as long, medium, short, close, or extra short, or faded. Tapering and blending areas for these basic lengths vary with the haircut design and the shape of the head. Now let's look at the figures real quick. So the apex is the highest point on your head before it starts to curve down. 
adds the apex Occip occipital bone is right here right um where the crown ends and these are the four corners you just do two diagonal lines intersecting at the apex to know where your four corners are okay okay with the exception of a bald fade or a bi-level cut tapering begins at the nape and side hairlines including the sideburns as indicated by the bottom dashed lines in the figures the top lines depict the highest point of the tapered area and indicate transition areas into the longer hair. Sections between dashed lines show where the gradual tapering and blending takes place. Notice the relationship of the tapering and blending areas in relation to the curves of the head. Longer styles usually require the least amount of close tapering. Okay, I see how it is. Tapering is performed from the nape hairline to just below the occipital and just above the bottom of the ear when seen from the back. If the ears are exposed, tapering on the sides begins at the hairline and connected with the taper behind the ear before blending into the longer side and back lengths. Medium length styles do not have a scalped appearance, although the hair is cut closer to the head than in longer fuller styles. Closer tapering is performed from nape hairline to the occipital at a point that is about even with the tops of the ears. In the sideburn areas, tapering should blend into the side section at the top of the ears. Semi-short styles are tapered slightly higher to above the occipital. The hair is tapered to the bottom of the parietal ridge in the back and side sections. Short or close styles usually require close tapering up to the bottom of the crest or at a level within the crest, ending at the curvature of the head in this area. Fade styles are cut extremely close in the back and lower side areas, become gradually longer in the crest, and are longest in the top section. Very close cutting, including balding when desired, is performed from the nape to the bottom of the parietal ridge. Sides are cut using the next larger clipper blade to blend through the parietal ridge. The next larger blade is used in the parietal area to blend with the top section. Hair is cut against the grain, across the grain, or with the grain, depending on the hair texture and growth pattern in the section being cut. So, taper area for medium length hairstyles. Taper area for longer hairstyles. So for longer hairstyles, you really do it from the bottom and you start tapering right here. Okay. Okay. Taper area for medium length hairstyles. So you actually do some taper here and then you do taper work here again. Okay. Yo, chill, Oreo. Figure 14 on dash 29. Taper area for semi-short hairstyles. Oh, okay, so you actually do the taper here and then you do the taper. This is kind of like a fade though. Tell me not, I thought this is kind of like a fade. Taper area for semi-short. Taper area for short hairstyles. Wow, I didn't know this was a taper. I thought the taper was just right here at the sideburns and the back. But this to me looks like a mid-fade. Taper area for fade hairstyles. Taper area for fade hairstyles. So how is it a taper area if it's a fade? This would be like a medium to high fade. Yeah, man, it's a little confusing, but we're going to get there. Understand design elements used in haircutting. Did you know state barber boards most often require practical exam candidates to perform a taper cut because it requires several cutting techniques using different tools to perform properly? These techniques include finger and shear, shear over comb, freehand shear, freehand clipper, clipper over comb, and razor outlining. Design is the foundation of all artistic applications and, and an understanding of its principles will help you develop a strong visual eye and the judgment needed to create successful designs for your clients. Barbers work with three-dimensional design elements of line, form, and shape, space, texture, and color. So we work in a three-dimensional design, line, form, space, 
texture and color lines a line is simply a series of connected dots that result in a continuous mark straight and curved lines are used in haircutting to create design shape and direction curved lines are either concave or convex in shape and may repeat as in wave pattern so if it repeats it's a wave pattern okay the three types of straight lines used in hair cutting are horizontal vertical and diagonal lines straight lines curved lines so which one's concave which one's convex and these are angles okay horizontalis what, what is this bro what does it say horizontal horizontal lines oh horizontal lines horizontal lines are parallel to the horizon or floor and direct the eye from one side to the other they're parallel to the horizon or the floor horizontal cutting lines build weight and are used to create a one length look and low elevation or blunt haircut designs low elevation means zero degrees right weight lines are usually created at the perimeter or at the occipital area of a haircut got it vertical lines are perpendicular to the floor and are described in terms of up and down this is the floor this is perpendicular Vertical partings facilitate projecting the hair at higher elevations while cutting. Vertical partings facilitate projecting the hair at higher elevations while cutting. Vertical cutting lines remove weight within the cut and create layers. They create layers. Layers may be cut in from short to long, cut in from long to short, or cut uniformly depending on finger placement horizontal vertical and diagonal lines all of these lines right here diagonal vertical horizontal and this right here the vertical line is perpendicular to the horizontal line weight line at perimeter so if you do horizontal lines especially if it's right here by the occipital um, bone you're going to create a lot of weight it's kind of giving you minimal elevation kind of like a zero degree cut kind of like a blunt cut weight line at occipital i'm telling you the occipital bone is right here and they have a horizontal line which creates a weight line at that point now this angle right here i really don't understand what it's trying to um portray i understand there's an angle here but why is that angle important vertical partings facilitate layering so these aren't vertical partings these are horizontal right here okay but maybe they're saying that if you um, part it vertically you could blend it easily or the layers are going to be um the weight is not going to be as prominent as it would be if it was going to be a horizontal line. What does this say? Di diagonal lines have a slanted direction and are used to create sloped lines within a haircut or at the perimeter to determine the design line. Diagonal line within top front section. So the top hair is going to be longer, the middle hair is going to be shorter, and the hair in the back is going to be the shortest. Okay, that understandable. This is the diagonal line. When used at the perimeter, these lines are referred to as diagonal forward or diagonal back. So, when used in the top section of a haircut design, a diagonal line produces increased length at one end and slopes down to a shorter length at the opposite end. Diagonal finger placement may also be used to create a stacked, layered effect at the perimeter or to blend longer layers to shorter layers within a haircut. Okay, 
I'll keep that in mind. So let's say a person has longer hair and he wants a, a bald fade or a skin fade. All I have to do is place my fingers in a diagonal direction to blend the shorter hairs with the longer hairs. That makes sense. Curved lines move in a semicircular or circular direction and can be shallow or deep. Curved lines soften a design and can be placed horizontal, horizontally, vertically, and, or diagonally. When repeated in opposite directions, they create a wave pattern. The rounded portion of a concave line curves inward and the rounded portion of a convex line curves outward. So the rounded portion of a concave line, it curves inward. And the rounded portion of a convex line curves outward. Okay. Concave and convex lines are often used at the perimeter of a hair design in the nape or back area and around the face. Cutting the nape or back area into a rounded shape with the curve at the bottom of the design produces a convex line. So when you drop the fade down and you have a, a, a drop by the occipital area, that's considered a convex line. Okay, Cutting the nape area into a rounded shape with the curve at the top of the design and the ends of the curve ending at the corners of the nape produces a concave line. So this one right here, I believe, um, is an example of the taper. So if you're doing a taper, the middle part, um, the middle part where the nape starts is going to be the highest point. And as you go towards the edges, it does slant down a little bit. So that would create a concave line. Okay. Figure 14-32. Bro, that's all the way up here. What are you talking about? Form. Form is the outline or shape of a hairstyle. Okay, the elements. Damn, bro, you're so loud. And for what? Y'all want me to shut down the door? Shut, shut down. <laughs> Close the door? Uh, it's too much work. The elements of width, length, and depth create a three-dimensional shape that can vary in terms of volume, proportion, and balance. Hairstyles should be proportionate to the client's overall body shape and size in balance with the features of his head, face, and neck. Proportion measures or shows the comparative relationship between two or more design elements of a form. These elements influence the visual proportion of one section of the head form to another or between the head form and the facial features and or the body. For example, if a client has a long neck and you shorten the natural hairline and the nape too high on the back of the neck, the haircut will look out of proportion and disproportionate to the client's neck length and um, appear unbalanced. Balance is the equal or appropriate proportion that creates symmetry and harmony in a design. Balance can be symmetrical or asymmetrical depending on the cutting lines and the ratio of length to width in the overall shape of the style. Hair density is an important design element when discussing balance between differences in the thickness of the hair. Now, let's read that one more time because I couldn't follow the sentence. Hair density is an important design element when discussing balance because differences in the thickness of the hair can make one side appear heavier than the other and create an unbalanced or unfinished look. So hair density is imperative. Space. Space, as it relates to art and design elements, space is considered either positive or negative. In hair design, the form, haircut or style, occupies positive space. So in hair design, the haircut occupies positive space and the area that surrounds it is negative space. I did not know that was a thing actually. Barbers are usually more aware of the positive space which is the form, then the negative space. However, it is the negative space that brings the positive space into sharp focus. For example, when you face a client toward the mirror to check your work, his haircut, form, occupies a positive space and the background you see in the mirror 
becomes negative space, allowing you to see areas of the form that need adjusting when checking for balance and proportion. So the form, the haircut or the style occupies positive space and the area that surrounds it is negative space. So the negative space, my background is in the middle of my other space. Okay, I kind of understand. Design texture. Design texture refers to the quality of a form surface. Is the surface shiny or dull, rough or smooth, straight or wavy or curly? These conditions impact the degree to which light reflects off the, off the surface of the hair and therefore affects the image or form we see. For example, wavy hair may appear to have light areas at the top, crest area of the wave and dark areas in the bottom, trough of the wave. Trough, is that how you say it? Which may need special blending to appear more uniform in a close cut hairstyle. Color. Like texture, different colors reflect light differently. Dark colors tend to recede in a design and lighter colors appear to come to the foreground. These color differences create the illusions of more or less depth and volume in a form. Dark colors tend to recede in a design and lighter colors appear to come to the foreground. Understand basic terminology used in haircutting and styling. Angles. An angle is the space between two lines or surfaces that intersect at a given point. Angles help to create strong, consistent foundations in haircutting and are used in two ways. Angles can refer to the degree of elevation at which the hair is held for cutting. A typical instruction, for example, would be angle the hair. For example, would be angle the hair section at a 45 degree projection from the head. Angles can also refer to the position of the fingers when cutting a section of the hair, and as in using a vertical parting, angle the fingers 45 degrees from the hairline to the occipital. Directional terms. Directional terms used in haircutting typically refer to how the tool is used relative to the direction of the way the hair grows. Directional terms used in haircutting typically refer to how the tool is used relative to the direction of the way the hair grows. Cutting against the grain means to cut the hair in the opposite direction from which it grows. Cutting with the grain is cutting the hair in the same direction in which it grows. Cutting across the grain means the hair is cut in a direction that is neither with nor against the grain. Cutting with a circular motion may be required in, a whirl, in whirl areas where the hair does not grow in a uniform manner. Figure 14-38, elevations relative to the head form. So, if you were to pull out the hair straight right here, this right here would be a 90 degree. But if you were to pull out the hair out here, this is a 45 degree. Say you were to pull it out right here, that gives it like a 65, 70 degree. Right here would be like a 25 degree. Got it, got it, got it. Cross checking. Cross-checking is the process of parting off subsections opposite from the elevation or direction at which they were cut to check the precision of cutting lines or blending. For example, a vertical subsection cut at 90 degree projection can be cross-checked by parting off the subsections horizontally at 90 degrees. Elevation and projection. 
Elevation is the angle or degree at which a section of hair is held from the head for cutting relative from where it grows. Elevation, also known as projection, so elevation is projection, okay, is the result of lifting the hair section above zero elevation or natural flaw. This projection of the hair while cutting produces graduation or layers and is usually described in terms of degrees. Zero elevation is the lowest elevation and produces weight, bulk, and maximum length at the perimeter of a hair design. Zero elevation is achieved by combing the hair straight down from where it grows and cutting it either against the skin as in the nape or around the ear area or as it is held straight down between the fingers to create the perimeter or design line. The design line serves as a guide for all subsequent partings that will be brought to the perimeter for cutting. Zero elevation cutting creates crisp, clean lines at the hairline on shorter hairstyles and achieves the standard blunt cut on longer hair. Holding the hair at 45 degrees from where it grows is considered to be medium elevation. So this right here, if you were to hold a hair shank that starts right here, that starts growing right here, and he pulls it out right here, this is a 45 degree elevation. But say the hair strand is right here and he starts to pull it all the way across right here. This is a 90 degree elevation. So don't get it twisted. Medium elevation or graduation creates layered ends or stacking within the parting of the hair from the zero elevation distance to the 45 degree position. Movement and texture are created within the distance between the two degrees, depending on the length of the hair and the position of the angle in relation to the head form. A horizontal parting and stationary guide at the perimeter is used to achieve the graduated or stacked effect. Horizontal parting and stationary guide at the perimeter is used to achieve the graduated or stacked effect. Okay, okay. Graduation can also be achieved by using a vertical parting projected at 45 degrees. With a diagonal finger placement of 45 degrees. So you have to pull it out at a 45 degree angle and you have to cut it with your fingers at a 45 degree angle. So it's double, okay. A 90 degree elevation is the most common projection used in men's hair cutting and is considered to be a high elevation. This right here, like I told you, this is 90 degrees. A 90 degree elevation produces layering, tapering, and blended effects. A 90 degree elevation produces layering, tapering, and blended effects. When using a 90 degree elevation, the hair is held straight out from the head from where it grows. Okay. Okay, I, I was about to be confused because I'm like, how is this 90 degrees right here? Yeah, I'm a little confused right here because, look, okay, vertical parting with 45 degree angle. So vertical parting, part like that, bam, 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 bam. And you pull out the hair at a 45 degree projection and you cut it at a 45 degree angle with your fingers placed at that angle like that. So that makes sense. It makes total sense right there. But right here, when using 90 degree elevation, the hair is held straight out from the head where it grows. How is this right here? 90 degrees. If the hair literally grows right here, 90 degrees is a straight line. So it'd be right here, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees? And then right here, it starts curving up. So 90 degrees is curved up. 90 degrees is curved up. 
I don't understand why 90 degrees right here would be at the bottom. This seems more like 45, 30 degrees to me. This right here seems like, this seems like 90 degrees. This seems like 90 degrees. All of it seems like 90 degrees except for like the bottom ones, which is kind of confusing. Either vertical and horizontal partings are used depending on the section of the head from, um, form being cut. A 90 degree elevation requires a traveling guide in order to move around and over the curves of the entire head. Lengths in various sections of the head form can vary, but the hair should still be blended overall. A 90 degree elevation is used to create uniform layers in which each hair section is cut to the same length or to perform a taper that is shorter at the hairline and increasingly longer toward the top. So you can do either or. Compare finger figures 14-42A and 42B. In both cases, the hair is positioned at 90 degrees using vertical partings in the back section. However, to create a tapered effect, the fingers and therefore the cutting line are positioned at a 45 degree angle to allow closer cutting to the head form in the nape area. So this right here, they're saying this is 45 degrees. This right here, they're saying this is 45 degrees. This right here, they're saying this is held at 45 degrees. This is held at 45 degrees. Which I'm trying to think. Yeah, and it is, it is 45 degrees. It is, it really is. Um, so let's compare. This one right here, a 90 degree taper. Oh, okay, no, so this one says uniform. So they're all the same length. They're all the same length, and it goes around. A 90 degree taper. So it's longer here, and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. I'll see you. If the haircut is started at the nape, the fingers will be positioned at a 45 degree angle from the hairline and will be gradually repositioned to a perpendicular position and then beyond a perpendicular as the hair is cut and blended over the curve of the head to the top section. An elevation of 180 degrees is often used to create layers when cutting long hair. A 90 degree stationary guide is used, usually in the top section, and the longer hair on the sides and back are elevated to the guide for cutting. It is important to remember that the hair being cut is at a 180 degree elevation, not the stationary guide. Remember to chapter 16, women's hair cutting and style, refer to chapter 16. Oh, damn. So they're going to teach us women's hair cutting and styling. Let's go, bro. Let's go. A part is a line created naturally or with a comb that divides the hair at the scalp, separating one section of the hair from another. The position and direction of the natural part is determined by the direction or slant the hair takes as it leaves the follicle. A client's natural part can easily be determined by combing clean, damp hair back toward the crown, and then gently pushing the section forward. I've seen that trick, actually. You comb it back, and then you push it down, and you comb it forward. Um, where the hair splits and falls to either side reveals the natural part. A hard part is created during the finishing steps of the haircut by shaving the scalp area of a natural or styled part line in the hair. A parting or subsection is a smaller section of hair that is parted off from a larger section of hair. The use of partings is essential to maintain control of the hair in manageable, manageable proportions and to perform precision cutting. The direction of the parting line at the scalp should be consistent with the intended cutting line. The direction of the parting line at the scalp should be consistent with the intended cutting line. Okay, got it. Partings may be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Partings are held horizontally, vertically, or diagonally with usually an elevation range of 0 to 180 degrees. The way a parting is sectioned off from a larger section and projected for cutting determines the end result. 
Layering within a haircut is usually achieved using one quarter of an inch to one half of an inch partings. So if you want to layer, use a quarter to half inch partings. The way a parting is sectioned off from a larger section and projected for cutting determines the end result. Okay. The cutting line is established by the angle of the fingers or comb when securing a section for, of hair for cutting. Cutting lines are horizontal, vertical, or diagonal based on the position of the fingers or tool. The cutting line right here is a horizontal, horizontal blunt cut design line. This means it has zero elevation. The cutting tool used will follow the, posi the position and angle of the fingers or comb when cutting. Finger or comb placement should be checked before cutting to avoid cutting in an, unwan cutting in an unwanted line design losing the guide or cutting off too much hair the design line is the outer perimeter line of the haircut it may act as a guide depending on the overall design of the haircut and the method the barber uses to achieve it a design line can be seen in the hanging length of a blunt cut or along the hairline of a shortcut wherever the perimeter of the haircut is located so design line is the outer perimeter line of the haircut. It may act as a guide depending on the overall design of the haircut and the method the barber uses to achieve it. A design line can be seen in the hanging length of a blunt cut or along the hairline of a short cut. A guide, also known as a guideline or a guide strand, is a cut that is made by which subsequent partings or sections of hair will be measured and cut. Guides are classified as being either stationary or traveling. Both types of guides may originate at the outer perimeter design line of the hair or at an interior section such as the crown area. Most haircuts are achieved by using a combination of the two types of guides. A stationary guide is used for achieving overall one length looking designs at the perimeter, a blunt cut. Maintaining the length of the section while subsequent partings are brought from what from other sections to meet it for cutting. This produces either an overall long layered effect or extra length within a section. A travel guide or a traveling guide moves along a section of hair as each cut is made. Once the cut of the initial guide has been cut, a parting is taken from in front of it or ne near it comb with the original guide and cut then a new parting is taken comb with the second parting of the hair and cut against that guide it is this it is this use of the previous guide to cut a subsequent parting of the hair that makes it a traveling guide care must be taken not to recut the original or subsequent guides as you move along the section to cut a new parting when performed correctly, a traveling guide ensures even layering and blending of the hair from one section to another. Okay, got it. Layers. Layers are produced by elevating the hair beyond zero elevation for cutting. Layers um, can originate from the front, top, crown, or perimeter. Layering can be angled shorter on top and longer at the perimeter. It could be uniform even throughout, or they could be fully tapered, longer on the top and shorter at the perimeter. Layering is used to blend, to create fullness, or to create movement or texture in the hair. A taper or tapering means that the hair conforms to the shape of the head. The head, the hair is shorter at the nape and hairline and longer in the crown and top areas. Most men's haircut requires some form of tapering. Blending of all of the hair lengths is extremely important. 
Blending of all of the hair lengths is extremely important. A weight line refers to the heaviest perimeter area of a zero elevation or 45 degree cut. A weight line is achieved by using a stationary guide at the perimeter and may be cut in a variety of levels on the head depending on the style. Weight lines can be continued or can be used in combination with a tapered nape area. The perimeter is the weight line in longer hairstyles that look to be one length. Texturizing is usually performed after the overall cut has been completed to create special effects such as wispy or spiky strands within the haircut or along the perimeter. Tension is the amount of pressure applied while combing and holding a section of the hair for cutting. Tension ranges from minimum to maximum as a result of the amount of stretching employed when holding the hair between the fingers. The spacing between the teeth of the comb also influences the amount of tension you will be able to achieve when combing the hair. This is, this is because the spacing between the teeth allows for more or less movement in the hair. For example, a fine tooth comb facilitates more tension than a wide tooth comb because the hair has less room to move or shift while the combing takes place. So let's say that one more time because let's read out one more time because I didn't grasp it. The spacing between the teeth of the comb also influences the amount of tension you'll be able to achieve when combing the hair. This is because the spacing between the teeth allows for more or, or less movement in the hair. So for example, a fine tooth comb facilitates more tension than a wide tooth comb. Got it. Use maximum tension on straight hair to create precise lines. So straight hair, maximum tension. Use minimal t uh, tension to moderate tension. Oh my gosh, let's read this one more time. Use minimal to moderate tension on curly and wavy hair as the hair may dry shorter than intended if maximum tension is used. Okay, that makes sense. Thinning refers to removing excess bulk from the hair. Outlining means marking the outer perimeter of the haircut in front of and around the ears and at the sides and nape of the neck. Outlining at the front hairline is optional, depending on hair texture. Overdirectioning creates a length increase in the design and occurs when the hair is combed away from its natural fall position rather than straight out of the head toward a guide. Hair styling is the art of arranging the hair in a particular style that is appropriately suited to the cut. Hair styling may involve the use of styling aids such as hairspray, gel, tonic, oil sheen, pomade, or mousse. Appliances in the form of blow dryers or irons and implements such as brushes, combs, and clips. A word about terminology. During the course of your barbering career, you'll be introduced to a variety of haircutting terms. Terminology for the most part depends on who is presenting the information or technique and whether or not new terms have replaced formerly used terms. For example, parting and subsection are terms that are often used interchangeably. Here are some important things to remember about terminology used in haircutting and styling. There are only so many angles and elevations that can be used in hair haircutting. Specific effects are created by using specific angles and elevations. History has a way of repeating itself in our industry and styles trends tend to be cyclical in nature. For example, crew cuts and box fades can be traced back to the years of World, of world War II. Finger waves were a hit in the 1920, 1920s and 1930s, and braiding has probably been around since humans first walked the earth. Design variations occur when a new spin or twist is incorporated into a basic cut or style. These examples simply reinforce why it is important that you become proficient in the basic skills which will enable you to adapt to whatever the current terminology trend might be. Describe 
haircutting techniques. Uh, my bad, my bad. So in chapter five, you were introduced to the correct holding positions for the comb shears, clippers, and razors. Oh my gosh. The terms used to describe the terms used to describe how we use these basic tools are finger and shear, shear over comb, freehand shear cutting, freehand clipper cutting, clipper over comb, razor over comb, and razor rotation. It is important to note that most hair cutting procedures require a combination of techniques and tools. The most important factors that determine the tools used to achieve the haircut are the client desired outcomes, the texture and density of the hair, and the barber's personal preference. As a professional barber, you should be comfortable and skillful using all the tools of the trade. Identify shear cutting techniques. The primary shear cutting techniques used in barbering, used in barbering are fingers and shear, shear over comb, shear point tapering, and free hand shear cutting. Other shear techniques are used for texturizing or removing bulk in the hair. See hair thinning and texturizing later in this chapter. Caution. The blades of the shears should rest flat and flush to the fingers for these positions. Angling the shear blades may cause injury to your fingers. So the blades of the shears should rest flat and flush to the fingers, okay? Makes sense. I see a lot of people point cutting though, so that kind of is um, contradicting to this um, this warning right here. So uh, I'm gonna have to read into it more. The fingers and shear technique may be used on many hair types from straight to curly. The three basic methods for using finger and shear techniques are cutting on top of the fingers, cutting below the fingers, and cutting palm to palm. Refer to procedure 14-1 for fingers and shear cutting techniques. So I think this is procedure 14-1. So fingers and shear cutting techniques. Cutting above the fingers is frequently used in men's hair cutting to cut and blend layers in the top, crown, and horseshoe areas. It is also used when cutting hair that is held up at a 90 degree elevation from vertical parting, such as at the sides and the back of the head form. Whether your finger position is perpendicular to the floor or angled at 45 degrees in these sections, the cutting should be performed on the outside or above the fingers. So this is cutting above the fingers, okay? It makes sense. The second part was a little confusing. When your finger position is perpendicular to the floor. If it's perpendicular to the floor, then your finger position is right here. But I guess I understand. Cutting below the fingers is most often used to create design lines at the perimeter of the haircut. Oh, okay, so it's to create a design line at the perimeter of the haircut. That makes sense. That actually makes sense now. Cutting palm to palm. Cutting palm to palm may be preferred by some practitioners. Care must be taken not to bend the hair or to project it higher than intended from the head form when using this technique. Also, remember that the shears follow finger placement, so avoid curling the fingers inward when cutting unless you want a curved cutting line. So this is cutting palm to palm, kind of like doing cutting above the fingers. It's the same thing, essentially. Like, tell me. What, what's the difference between cutting above the fingers and cutting palm to palm? It's exactly the same. Shear over comb cutting. The shear over comb technique is used to cut the ends of the hair and is an important method used in tapering. The comb is used to put the hair in a position to be cut and acts similarly to holding a section of the hair between the fingers. 
Most shear over comb cutting is performed in the nape, behind the ears, and around the ears, and in the sideburn areas of a cut. However, an entire haircut can be also accomplished using this method. Following are a few important guidelines for performing the shear over comb technique. Use vertical working panels when cutting back and side sections. Use vertical working panels. What does that mean? Use vertical working panels when cutting back and side sections. Make sure panels overlap for better blending and to avoid missing sections of hair that need to be cut. After your first cut, make sure you can see the guide so you know where to cut or cut from next. Use a diagonal comb placement with cutting areas behind and around the ears. Use a diagonal comb placement when cutting areas behind and around the ears. So what does it mean on the first one right here? Use vertical working panels when cutting back and side sections. Oh, okay, back and side sections like right here. Maybe that's what it means. So hold the comb and shears properly. So this is how you hold the comb and the shear. Open and close the shear in tandem with an upward movement of the comb. So it has to be an upward movement of the comb. Roll the comb using a key turning motion. So roll the comb using a key turning motion. So brush the hair down and then you, you uh, hold it back again like this. I think that's what it's saying. Did you know, traditionally, men's hair is not sectioned off with a hair clip unless the length of the hair warrants it. When working with long hair, there are three areas where a hair clip may be necessary to hold some of the hair out of the way while cutting. The top section, at the sides, and at the nape when cutting in a design line. Take some time and practice the following exercises to help you master shear over comb cutting. You can practice in front of a mirror or facing a partner. Position the comb and shears parallel to each other. Practice aligning the still blade of the shears with the comb at the level where the teeth join the back of the comb. So practice aligning the still blade so the blade does not move with the comb at the level where the teeth join the back of the comb. So right here, this section right here, this little section right here. So this top blade is the the um, the still the still blade, and the bottom blade is the moving blade. So leave it right here. Okay, that makes sense. Move the comb upward and opening and closing the shears simultaneously with the movement of the comb. So you have to go upwards with it when you're going, okay. After several cutting movements, use a key turning motion to roll the teeth of the comb away from you as if you were combing through the hair. After several cutting movements, use a key turning motion, a key, key turning motion. So like from like this to this, to roll the teeth of the comb away from you or do you mean like this? As if you were combing through the hair. This way or this way? Roll the comb using a key turning motion. That's a little confusing. Once you have become comfortable with the exercise, you can begin practicing on your mannequin. Start at the hairline in the center of the nape area. With the teeth of the comb pointing upward and comb into the section of hair at the hairline, rolling the comb out toward you. The hair should protrude from the teeth of the comb and be in a position for cutting. This is called rolling the comb out. Position the hair to be cut by rolling the comb out. So at a degree, not straight up, but is at a degree. 
pointing upward toward you. Simultaneously move the shears and the comb through the central panel, cutting the hair in the process. Stop at the occipital area and comb the hair down toward the hairline. Begin the next panel by including some of the hair from the center section with the hair to the right or left of center. There should now be two lengths of hair in the comb. Shorter hair from the center section and longer hair from the set, uh, second section. The shorter hair from the center section becomes the guide for the second panel. So you see right here, it's shorter here. This is the other, okay, got it, got it. Finishing one vertical strip at a time before proceeding with the next section. The shear over comb technique is also used in shear point tapering. To thin out or customize difficult areas caused by hollows, wrinkles, whirls, or creases in the scalp, dark and ra ragged hair patches can be minimized using the shear point tapering technique, which uses the points of the shears to cut a few strands of hair at a time until the spot becomes less noticeable and blends in with the surrounding hair or hairline. Okay, so it's this one, shear point taper in the nape area. So it's pointing at the hair and cutting individual strands instead of cutting all these at the same time. A comb can still be used to control hair for freehand cutting. A comb can still be used to control hair for freehand cutting. Fine tuning with freehand cutting. Freehand shear cutting. Freehand shear cutting is a technique that may or may not utilize your fingers or a comb to control the hair while cutting against the skin. This will depend on your personal preference and the type of freehand cutting being performed. For example, combing a section of hair down and cutting against the skin is a form of freehand shear cutting. However, you may prefer to use the comb to control the hair section against the client's skin. A second method of freehand shear cutting is to consistently open and close the shears as you skim over the surface of the hair to cut any stray hairs protruding from the design. This technique can be used in the final stages of a haircut, beard trim, or other procedure to fine tune your work and is especially effective for shaping or trimming tight curl textures. Identify clipper cutting techniques. Clippers are versatile tools that can be used in several ways to cut a variety of hair textures and styles. The standard techniques are freehand clipper cutting and clipper over comb cutting. However, you can also use clippers as you would shears to cut hair that is held between your fingers. This, is cut, this cutting method creates a more texture in the, hair, uh, in the hair ends than the blunt ends that shears produce. As a general rule, Clipper cutting is followed up with shear and comb work to fine tune the haircut and or to perform arching or outline work. <coughs> <coughs> Woo! Cutting and tapering the hair with clippers can be accomplished by cutting with the grain, against the grain, or across the grain. Compare the directions of hair growth and tool usage in table 14-1, it's down here. Freehand clipper cutting. Freehand clipper cutting techniques requ require, oh no, freehand clipper cutting requires a steady hand and consistent use of the comb or hair pick while cutting. The use of the comb or pick is important because both implements are used to put the hair into the position to be cut and help to remove the excess hair cut from the previous section. This will provide you with a clear view of the cutting results in any areas that may need reblending or cutting. True freehand clipper cutting techniques tend to be used on two extremes of hair length. So this is table 14-1, directions of hair growth and, and tool usage. So cutting with the grain, cut in the same direction of the hair growth. So this hair, is very very curly hair so to avoid bald patches for these clients you have to cut in the same direction that the hair grows cutting with the grain 
cutting against the grain. So it's the same client. Cut in the opposite direction of the hair growth. So now you have shorter hairs here. And it's safer to go against the grain as opposed to the top. Cutting across the grain. Cut neither with nor across the grain in transition areas. So where the blend is going to be at, you can cut across the grain. Got it. Did you know freehand clipper cutting, clipper over comb, and finger over and shear work are techniques that are frequently combined to perform a single haircut? Yes, I did know. Did you know the use of guards is not considered to be a form of freehand clipper cutting? Well, that makes sense because you're using guards. Nor is this technique usually acceptable for state board practical examinations. So you're saying usually you can't use guards to cut hair? The use of guards is not considered to be a form of freehand clipper cutting. Nor is this technique usually acceptable for state board practical examinations. Yo, that's crazy, yo. They're used for very short, straight, wavy, and curly lengths in which little clipper over comb work is performed. For short hairstyles, detachable blades Detachable blade sizes generally range from size well, quadruple zero, close to shaving, to size three and a half, which leaves the hair approximately three eighths of an inch long. Some manufacturers now have, whoa, zero, 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 zero blade sizes as well. Freehand clipper cutting techniques are used for longer, tightly curled hair lengths that require more sculpting. Used for cutting tightly curled hair when a natural look is desired, the hair is picked out and put into position for cutting. A keen eye for balance, shape, and proportion is important when sculpting the hair into shape. So this looks like a mannequin. Lightly guide the clipper upward from the hairline into the hair about an inch above the hairline. Guide the blades through the ends of the hair. Remove the hair at lower nape area. Did you know detachable blades should not be confused with clipper attachment combs? Most commonly known as guards. Guards are placed on top of a clipper blade, allowing for more hair length to remain while cutting. Okay, okay. So the freehand method is also used to taper hair lines at the nape, back, and sides. Refer to the following guidelines when practicing freehand clipper per cutting. My bad, I got confused. Refer to the following guidelines when practicing freehand clipper cutting. Remember to practice on a mannequin first. Start in the center of the nape area with the blades open. Gradually tilt the blade away from the head so the clipper rides on the heel of the bottom blade. So gradually tilt the blade away from the head so, so the clipper rides on the heel of the bottom blade. Glide the clipper upward into the hair to above an inch above the hairline. Roll the clipper out as the blades cut through the ends of the hair. Note, note the removal of hair in the lower nape area. Note the removal of hair in the lower nape area. Clipper over comb cutting. Clipper over comb cutting can be used for the entire haircut or to blend the hair from the shorter tapered areas to longer areas at the top, crest, or occipital. Much like the shear over comb technique, the comb places the hair in a position to be cut and utilizes the same blending principles. Refer to the following guidelines when practicing clipper over comb cutting. Always remember to practice on a mannequin first. Begin in the back section and comb the hair down. Roll the comb out to put the hair in a position to be cut. Cut across the hair ends protruding from the comb with the clipper. Roll the comb out to position the hair for the clipper. Roll the comb out. Arcing or arching with a clipper or trimmer. Reminder, when using the clipper over comb technique to taper, 
Be sure to tilt the comb away from the head to create a blended taper from shorter to longer sections. Many barbers prefer to use an outliner or trimmer with a fine cutting edge to the uh, finish sideburns and the outline around the ears and down the sides of the neck. This method of arching is efficient and precise due to the manu maneuverability of the smaller cutting head of the tool. If the desired result can be accomplished with the standard clipper, that method is equally acceptable. Refer to procedures 14 dash 2 and 14 dash 3 for guidelines on arching techniques and the outline shave so this one is cutting using the razor over comb technique so you could use a razor over oh i never knew you could do that razor cutting razor cutting is another method used by barbers to cut or texturize the hair the angle of the razor relative to the surface of the hair tapers the hair ends rather than the blunt ends produced by sheer cutting. So the angle of the razor relative to the surface of the hair tapers the hair ends rather than the blunt ends produced by sheer cutting. This advantage makes razor cutting an effective option for blending, softening, shortening, or releasing weight from the hair strands during a cut. The basic razor cutting techniques are razor rotation, razor over comb, and fingers and razor cutting. The hair sections being cut need to be kept uniformly damp to ensure the blade cuts through the hair smoothly without pulling or snagging. Dry cutting is uncomfortable for the client and can frizz the hair surface. So this is the razor over comb. This right here is razor rotation and it involves a two part continuous movement. So razor cutting techniques. Razor over comb cutting can be performed in two different ways using a freehand razor position. The first method is similar to shear or clipper over comb cutting, where rolling the comb out projects the hair ends into the position for cutting and vertical or diagonal razor strokes are used across the comb to remove length. The, section me the second method involves positioning the razor horizontally on top of the comb okay horizontally on top of the comb to cut the hair that extends through the teeth of the comb with short precise strokes and medium pressure this second method is often used to blend and taper sections or to soften weight lines razor Rotation. Razor rotation is performed by using a rotating mo motion with the comb and razor as the hair is being cut. In the first movement, the razor follows the comb through the hair. In the second movement, the comb follows the razor and so on to taper, blend, thin, or remove weight. This method requires coordinated razor stroking and combing actions to maintain continuous movements through the hair. So, razor rotation. Razor rotation about two part continuous movement. So that one's a little bit confusing. I have to see a video because I haven't seen it ever. Fingers and razor cutting is performed by holding the hair section between your fingers and cutting either from the top to the bottom of the section or from the one side to the other. This method can be used on vertically or horizontally parted sections to remove length, taper ends, or reduce weight in mid -sha shaft sections, also known as freehand slicing. Also known as freehand slicing with razor. This technique can be used to create more movement within a style or to soften perimeters. Razor strokes. But caution, the use of a razor with a safety guard is recommended for the beginner. Some barbers consider razor cutting to be the best method for tapering and blending the hair because the razor edge permits a smoother blend. 
than what can be achieved with shears or clippers. When razor cutting a section, the cutting technique and angle of the razor strokes you use will determine how much hair is removed from the hair strands. It is important that you learn how to coordinate your razor and comb. A general rule is to taper a little at a time to avoid removing too much hair. Consider the following taper blending methods used to achieve different effects. In light taper blending, the razor is held almost flat against the surface of the hair. Note the small amount Note the small amount of hair that is cut when the blade is only slightly tilted and very little pressure is used. So light taper bending, blending. The razor is held almost flat against the surface of the hair. I, I see how that is. It's just flat against the surface of the hair. Heavier taper blending is performed with the razor held up to 45 degrees from the surface of the hair strand. As the razor is tilted, higher and a little more pressure is used, the depth of the cut increases. So as it is tilted higher and a little more pressure is used, the depth of the cut increases. So heavier taper blending, you hold it at a 45 degree angle instead of laying it flat against it and the lower you go the more you tilt it higher and higher and the more depth you'll cut because of it okay in terminal blending the angle of the razor blade is increased to almost 90 degrees so this is called terminal blending heavier taper blending light taper blending in terminal blending, the angle of the razor is increased to almost 90 degrees, almost straight up. This produces the least amount of tapering to the hair ends. This produces the least amount of tapering to the hair ends. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Hair textures and razor cutting. Some general guidelines to keep in mind when razor cutting different hair textures are as follows. Coarse, thick hair requires more strokes and heavier tapering than other textures to remove bulk. Medium textured hair requires fewer razor strokes and lighter pressure than coarse, thick hair to blend or remove bulk, avoiding over thinning the hair. Fine hair does not usually have any bulk to remove, although you might want to use the razor to create texture at the perimeter. Use a light stroke of the razor with very little pressure. Razor cutting tips. The hair must be clean and damp for best results and to avoid client discomfort. Maintain moisture content throughout the cut. Avoid tapering too close to the hair part or the scalp. Tapering the hair too closely to the hair part will cause the hair to stand up, making the part look ragged. Coarse hair that is cut too closely to the scalp will have short, stubby hair ends that can protrude through the top layer. So coarse hair that is cut too closely to the scalp will have short, stubby hair ends that can, produce, can, that can protrude through the top layer. Avoid over tapering as it is difficult to correct a haircut after too much hair has been removed. Razor cutting safety precautions. Handle the razor properly, keeping it closed whenever not in use. Be aware of the people around you when working with any sharp tool or implement. A careless motion can cause injury to yourself or others. Do not distract or startle anyone who is performing a service. Purchase and use only good quality hair cutting implements. Use changeable blade razors and dispose of used blades in a sharp container. In a sharps container. Replace dual razor blades during the cut if necessary. A dull blade will pull the hair and cause pain 
or discomfort to the client. Dull blades will also decrease the quality of the haircut. Hair thinning and texturizing. Hair thinning is used to reduce the bulk or weight of the hair. You can use thinning, serrated shears, regular shears, clippers, or a razor for this purpose. Regardless of the tool used, some general rules um, to follow when removing bulk from the hair are as follows. Make a careful observation of the hair to determine the sections that require some reduction in bulk or weight and cut accordingly. Avoid cutting top surfaces of the hair where visible cutting lines can be seen. Part, part off and elevate the hair to be cut to avoid cutting too deeply into the section. Avoid cutting too closely to the scalp or part lines. So removing bulk mid shaft with thinning shears. Review the following methods that can be used to reduce bulk or thick areas within a hair design. Thinning. When thinning with serrated shears, the hair parting is combed and held between the index and middle finger. Place the serrated shears about mid shaft on the strands and make a cut. Subsequent cuts at about one inch from the first cut. Do not cut twice in the same place. Slicing and carving. These are two slicing methods that can be used to remove bulk with regular shears. Figure 14-68 shows the slicing technique performed on the surface of the hair. Figure 14-69 shows the carving technique performed by elevating the hair at 45 to 90 degrees and gliding the open shears through the hair with a curving motion. This removes hair from the under portion of the parting as the motion is continued to the hair ends. So, curving with shears to remove bulk. With the curving motion. Slithering. In this procedure, a thin parting of hair is held between the fingers. The shears are positioned for cutting and an up and down sliding motion along the hair section is combed with the slight closing of the shears each time they are moved toward the scalp. This is slithering. So, in this procedure, a thin parting of the hair is held between the fingers. The shears are positioned for cutting and an up and down sliding motion along the hair section is combined with a slight closing of the shears each time they're moved toward the scalp. Removing weight from the ends. Removing weight from the ends helps to taper or lighten the perimeter of graduated and blunt cuts. This can be accomplished using thinning or serrated shears by elevating the section and placing the shears at an angle as the cuts are made or by using the comb to put the hair into position for cutting. So remove weight from the ends. Point cutting or notching. Now let me see this one again because I don't... <sighs> Removing weight from the ends helps to taper or lighten the perimeter. This can be accomplished using thinning shears by elevating the section and placing the shears at an angle. So at like 45 degree angle. As the cuts are made or by using the comb to put the hair into position for cutting. Point cutting or notching. Oh, that's the point cutting that I was telling you about. With regular shears can be used to reduce weight in the ends of the hair. For either of these techniques, the parting is held between the fingers and the tips of the shears are used at a vertical or diagonal angle to create points or notches in the hair. Typically, notching is a more aggressive type of point cutting that produces a chunkier effect at the hair ends. Clippers and razors can also be used to remove weight from the ends of the hair as follows. Use the clipper over comb technique to put the hair ends in a position to be cut. Position the clipper blades under the ends of the hair. 
Position the clipper blades under the ends of the hair. Use a reverse rotation technique with the clipper to comb through and cut the ends from one section to another. Razor over comb or freehand slicing techniques can be used to lighten hair ends with a razor. Reminder, the haircut style will determine the point of the head at which the tapered area is blended into longer hair. Short styles such as crew cuts and fades have a high taper that is blended into the transition area of the crest. Longer styles may be blended at or just below the occipital. There are as many variations as there are as there are heads of hair to cut. Recognize basic haircut styles. As a barber, most of the haircuts you perform will result in some variation or combination of the basic haircuts discussed in this section. Knowing how to perform these cuts provides the foundation from which to create customized hair designs for your clients. That said, it will be helpful to keep the following considerations in mind when discussing, when discussing different haircut names and styles. Style names may refer to a particular haircut or variation of a haircut, for example, taper cut or businessman's cut. Haircut style names may differ or may be interpreted differently from region to region. For example, a temple, a temple fade in the Midwest may be called a Philly fade on the East Coast, and the Quo Vedis has been known to be called a Caesar cut in some parts of the country, when in fact the traditional Caesar is a longer style. As with other expressions of fashion, Haircut styles tend to be cyclical. This means that a basic style often modified in some way is reintroduced to the market and becomes popular again as a new trend. For example, the classic pompadour of the 1950s has returned in both its classic form with variations or modifications that have produced a variety of pompadour fade styles. Your familiarity with basic haircut style names will provide you with a frame of reference for discussing haircut options with your clients and the ability to perform the many variations you will encounter in the barbershop. Some classic haircut styles name, names are the flat top, the crew cut, the high and tight, the fade, taper, pompadour, Caesar cut, and the quo vetus. Following is a discussion of these classic cuts and their variations. Flat tops are very short on the sides and back area, with slightly longer hair at the upper, parietal, and front sections, and a flat top section. The top of the crest area should look squared off when viewed from the front. A high top fade is a variation of the flat top combined with elements of a fade. Flat tops require a steady hand and consistent horizontal comb placement when cutting through the top section to ensure a balanced level cut. Following are a few tips for flat tops. The squared off crest and top sections create the flat look. Variations of the style and length of the top section will be determined by the client's preference, head shape, hair texture, and hair density. A steady hand is needed when cutting the top section. Clippers and shears are used to perform the cut. Crew cuts have short, semi-short, or medium tapered side and back length with its top section that gradually increases in the length from the crown to the front hairline. When viewed from the front, crew cuts are more rounded um, than flat tops in the crest area and should blend into the top section with a slight curvature that conforms to the con contours of the head. Following are some basic guidelines for crew cuts. The back and sides are cut relatively high to the bottom of the crest area. Back and sides are tapered and blended to the crest and top sections. A wide tooth comb is used in the top section to provide a level guide. The shear and comb are used to smooth out any uneven spots left by clipper work. 
Brush or butch cuts are variations of the crew cut. The sides and back are a cut. Brush or butch cuts are variations of the crew cut. I've never heard of those cuts. The sides and back are cut to a short crew, out, crew cut length, but the hair on top is uniformly cut at a quarter of an inch to half an inch and follows the contours of the head. A brush cut is styled with the hair combed back over the top section to stand straight up while the butch cut may be styled forward or to the side. So a brush cut is styled with the hair combed back over the top section to stand straight up while the butch cut may be styled forward or to the side. I wish they had a picture. There's no such thing as a brush cut, bro. They'd be lying to me. High and, high and tight cuts are cut extremely close or shaped on the sides and back to a level at the bottom, midpoint, or top of the parietal ridge where visible hair should be seen blending with a short top section no more than one-fourth of the inch in length. Depending on the client's preferences, the line of demarcation at the top of the parietal ridge can either be left as is or be blended into the top section. So, high and tight. So this is a high and tight. Uh, that's a horrible haircut, bro. This is a horrible haircut. The fade style derives its name from the fact that the hair is longer in the top section and gradually fades down to nothing at the hairline. Like the high and tight cut, the back and sides are cut extremely close or shaved with the hair becoming gradually longer at the parietal ridge and longest at the top. Like other basic styles discussed, there are many variations of fades that can be formed on a variety of hair textures. Following are some general guidelines for fade styles. Cut the top section to the desired length. Cut the nape up to the occipital to the desired length. The parietal ridge is the transitioning area between the sides and top sections. Most of the blending and close tapering occurs in this area. Be guided by the natural hair growth pattern to avoid creating gaps and patches. So for fade styles, cut the top section to the desired length, cut the nape up to the occipital and to the desired length. Um, a shadow fade is with a one, right? Shadow. Hey, no. Man, I fucked up. <laughs> shadow fade. Yeah, I think the shadow fade is like with the one. The parietal ridge is the transitioning area between the sides and the top sections. Most of the blending and close tapering occurs in this area. Be guided by the natural hair growth patterns to avoid creating gaps and patches. A taper cut is a well-blended, graduated cut that conforms to the head shape. A proper taper cut gradually increases in length from the hairline to the top section without any gaps or steps. Typically, the top section is left long enough to provide different styling options for parted and the off-the-face styles. The basic taper cut may also be called a regular taper or standard haircut with variations that include the businessman's cut, Ivy League, Princeton, and Precision cut. 
Taper cuts can be um, can vary in length and volume from short and close to long and full, but all tapers should conform to the natural head shape. When performing a taper cut, you will need to ask your client if you want a natural taper at the nape or if you want if you want it blocked. Refer to procedures 14-4 through 14-8 for guidelines on how to complete the precision cut basic taper cut, razor cut, flat top, and crew cut, and the taper fit. Following are some general guidelines for taper cuts. Use the fingers and shear technique in the top and crest <gasps> section. Taper nape and side hairlines. Oh my gosh. Using freehand clipper or clipper over comb cutting. Taper through the back and sides using clipper over comb or shear over comb techniques. A precision cut taper describes a variation in the cutting technique rather than a style description. The majority of the cut is performed using the fingers and shear cutting technique to taper and blend the hair from one section to another. A general rule to follow for using precision cutting on various hair textures is this. If the hair can be parted and picked up between the fingers to be put into position for cutting, precision cutting can be performed. The hair should be clean and uniformly moist to enable you to maintain control of the hair while cutting and to produce the most precise cut. So. A precision cut taper describes a variation in the cutting technique rather than a style description. So it describes a variation in the cutting technique. The majority of the cuts performed using the finger and shear cutting technique to taper and blend the hair from one section to another. A general rule to follow for using precision cutting on various hair textures is this. If the hair can be parted and picked up between the fingers, to be put into position for cutting, precision cutting can be performed. Got it. The classic pompadour is basically a medium to long taper cut with a long top section. Depending on the client's preferred length, the taper begins at the hairline and gradually increases in length throughout the back and the sides to a long layered front and top section. Layering in the top section provides many styling options from a slick back look to a full or spiky front section. Today's pompadour fade variation combines the very short nape back and side sections of a fade with the extra long top section of the classic cut. Compare figures 14-78 and 14-79 to see the blended lengths of the classic pump and the demarcation between lengths of the pump fade. Refer to procedures 14-9 through 14-11 for guidelines on how to complete the pompadour fade, fade haircut with star design, and shadow fade cut. Following are some general guidelines for pompadour cuts. Length increase in the top section can be achieved by using over direction from the front to the crown or by using a diagonal cutting line that is shorter at the crown and increasingly longer toward the front. When performing the classic pompadour, use vertical partings and steep diagonal cutting lines to blend short sides to longer top lengths. Be sure to have the client confirm what type of pompadour he desires, classic or pomp fade style. So the classic pompadour, pompadour fade. The classic Caesar style is cut with shears to create short, uniform layers from one to two inches throughout the head form. These short layers are often styled forward and down over the front hairline and may have a rounder appearance than other cuts. Today's version of the Caesar cut may incorporate tapering or fading in the side and back areas with a uniform length in the top section that is styled forward. Following are some, guide, um, some general guidelines for a Caesar. I did not catch anything that I read, bro. The classic Caesar style is cut with shears 
to create short, uniform layers from 1 to 2 inches throughout the head form. These short layers are often styled forward and down over the front hairline and may have a rounder appearance than other cuts. Today's version of the season cut may incorporate tapering or fading in the side and back areas with the uniform length in the top section that is styled forward. So guidelines for a Caesar. Older clients may not be familiar with the new variations of Caesar cut, so you'll have to explain the differences to them to confirm what type of Caesar they have in mind. So this is a Caesar cut. One to two inch on top, just combed forward, and it's a uniform all around. Okay, okay. The fingers and shear technique is used to cut the hair at 90 degree elevations to create uniform layers within the cut. The classic quo vadis is sometimes confused with the Caesar. So again, be sure your client confirms his expectations before you begin the cut. The quo vadis is another uniformly cut style. However, clippers are used to achieve its close, even all over length. This haircut style, which generally is suitable for most hair textures, conforms to the contours of the head and produces a more uniformly consistent appearance on medium to thick hair, following our general guidelines for the Crow Vadis style. So let me see how it looks. It looks exactly the same, just shorter. The even all over length will depend on the client's preferences. Select a blade size that will leave the hair at the desired length. Be guided by the natural hair growth pattern to avoid creating gaps in patches. Remember that cutting against the grain leaves the hair shorter than cutting with the grain. So be guided by the natural hair growth pattern to avoid creating gaps and patches. So explain haircut finish work. Once you have finished the haircut, you should include finishing work in your customer service routine. A neck or outline shave, an eyebrow trim, and the removal of stray hairs from the ears or nostrils are standard procedures included in finishing work. Offering to perform these finishing touches after every haircut provides a professional barbershop experience for your clients and helps you build your client base and new referrals. Shaving the outline areas. Performing a neck shave or outline shave as a feature of the haircut service contributes to the appearance of the finished cut and should follow outlining work with shears, clippers, or trimmers. The traditional neck shave consists of shaving the sides of the neck and across the nape with a razor. The outline shave starts at the bottom of the sideburns and arches around and behind the ears down the sides of the neck and across the nape. The front hairline is often included as part of the outline shave in many African American styles. Oh trimming the eyebrows. Eyebrow trimming may require a combination of techniques depending on the length and density of brow hair. Sheer over comb is the most popular technique for eyebrow trimming, but an outliner over comb technique can be used as well. Freehand shear cutting is sometimes required to cut individual straight hairs that extend beyond the natural arch of the brow and should be done carefully. Safety and protection of the client's eyes should always be the first consideration when using any eyebrow trimming technique. Trimming excess nostril and ear hair. Outliners with T-shaped blades or nose hair trimmers are the safest tools get, um, to use for trimming excess hair from the nostril. So outliners with T-shaped blades. Outliners with T-shaped blades or nose trimmers are the safest tools to use for trimming excess hair from the nostrils. If you're using a T-bladed trimmer, Simply grasp the tip of the nose between your thumb and index finger and gently tilt it up or to the side. So grasp the tip of the nose between your thumb 
an index finger and gently tilt it up or to the side of the nose. Position the first few teeth of the blades on a slight diagonal to trim the hairs. Follow the manufacturer's direction when using nose hair trimmers, as there are several styles available on the market. Trimming excess hair in or around the ears is also performed with an outliner or trimmer. Some barbers prefer a T-bladed tool because it's easier to maneuver in small, tight areas. Always dust off residual hair and around the ears after trimming. Discuss head shaving. The shaved head is one of today's fashions trend that many men choose regardless of the density or growth pattern of their hair. The hair and scalp are prepared with hot towels and lather followed by straight razor shaving. So in order to completely shave this head, we have to um, use a hot towel. So the hair and scalp are prepared with hot towels and lather followed by straight razor shaving. Following are some guidelines for performing a head shave. Thoroughly analyze the scalp to identify moles or other hypertrophies. If you're pre-cutting the hair, leave enough length for the razor to grab as the blade passes over the scalp. Keep the scalp moist and your stretching non-dominant hand dry. Stretch the skin to create a smooth, shaving surface so identify styling techniques hair styling is the art of arranging the hair into an appropriate style Woo! hair styling is the art of arranging the hair into an appropriate style following a haircut or shampoo service today many haircuts require minimal hairstyling techniques due to the quality of the cuts current styles and the avail availability of effective styling aids such as gels, pomades, and styling sprays. Other haircuts require more styling attention such as blow drying or picking the style into place. In this section, the methods discussed for styling men's hair include natural drying, finger styling, scrunch styling, fi finger waving, blow drying, and blow waving. Describe basic styling techniques. Many men prefer quick and easily styling routines. Review the following section to learn about some of these methods. Natural drying. As the name implies, natural drying is a term used when the hair is left to air dry naturally. Typically, the hair is combed into place or arranged with the fingers and allowed to dry in place. Gels, pomades, or other styling products can be applied to hold the hair in place while it dries or can be applied after the hair is dry since it is not a good idea for both aesthetic and health reasons to let a client leave the shop with damp hair use a heat ha uh, lamp or blow dryer with diffuser to speed up the drying process describe finger styling when finger styling the hair you will use your fingers to manipulate the hair into the place of the comb or brush some clients prefer the more texturized look that finger styling produces as opposed to the smoother look achieved with combs or brushes. Using a blow dryer during the procedure is optional and will usually depend on the degree of dampness of the hair. So when finger styling the hair, you will use your fingers to manipulate the hair into the place, into place instead of comb or a brush. Got it. So that's finger styling the hair which I do all the time. I don't even know why I had to read over again a second time. Scrunch styling. Scrunch styling is actually a form of finger styling that is typically used on wavy to curly hair patterns with enough, enough length to create a tussled look. A diffuser attachment on the blow dryer will allow only the heat to transfer while you lift and squeeze the hair between your fingers. So, a diffuser attachment on the blow dryer will allow only the heat to transfer while you lift and squeeze the hair between your fingers. Wavy and curly hair 
may require the application of a spray gel or a light pomade to reduce the frizzy hair ends that sometimes accompany these hair textures. So this is scrunch styling technique. Finger waving. Finger waving is a wet styling technique that involves the process of shaping and directing the hair into an S pattern using the fingers, comb, and styling lotion. Finger waving was popular for both men and women during the 1920s and 1930s and is still used today either to direct the hair into a flat, sleek, wave formation or to add volume and direction to a section of hair when dried. Oh my God, you Practice blow dry styling. Blow drying not only accelerates the hair drying process but also allows you to temporarily straighten or give direction to the hair to create a more finished look. Blow dry styling is the technique of drying and styling damp hair in one operation and has revolutionized the hair care industry. While some men may not wish to do more than comb the hair into place and let it dry, the use of a blow dryer offers some options for speed drying and special effects styling, such as blow waving. Refer to procedure 14-13 for guidelines on blow drying techniques. The implements used with the blow dryer include combs, picks, and a variety of brushes. In most cases, the texture of the hair and the desired effect will dictate the type of implement to use. The blow drying techniques discussed in this section are free form, stylized, or blow waving and diffused. So the implements used with blow dryer include combs, picks, and a variety of brushes. In most cases, the texture of the hair and desired effect will dictate the type of implement to use. Okay? And blow drying techniques discussed in this section are free form stylized blow waving and diffused. Free form blow drying using fingers. Free form drying. Free form blow drying is a quick, easy method of drying the client's hair that is probably most like the techniques men use at home. This technique can build fullness into the style while allowing the hair to fall into the natural lines of the cut. Some barbers choose free form blow drying for the following reasons. It shows the client the ease with which the style can be duplicated. It demonstrates the quality of the haircut as the hair falls into place. The blow drying serve, service is accelerated and it allows the barber to check the accuracy of the work as the hair falls into the place. Focus on, keep the air and the hair moving when blow drying style, when blow dry styling to prevent burning the client's scalp. Stylized blow drying creates a more finished appearance because each section is dried in a, in a definite direction with the aid of a comb or a brush followed by the dryer. Heat makes physical changes in the hair when using blow dryer in this fashion and sets the hair in a particular direction for a look that is smoother and more precisely directed overall. Dry the hair underneath first to avoid messing, missing damp sections and to speed up the drying process. If you are using styling products, be sure to select one that allows manipulation of the hair rather than one that sets the hair in place while it is being dried and styled. So let's read that one more time. So if you're using styling products, be sure to select one that allows manipulation of the hair rather than one that sets the hair in place while it is being dried and styled. When a comb or brush and the blow dryer are used to create wave patterns and direction in the hair, the technique is called blow waving or air waving. So when a comb or brush and the blow dryer are used to create a wave pattern in the direction of the hair, the technique is called blow waving. That's what I do on a daily. Diffused drying is used when the client desires to maintain the natural wave pattern of the hair as opposed to tempor temporarily straighten it with the blow dryer with the blow dryer and a brush. A diffuser attachment on the blow dryer is an effective option when arranging or picking out very curly hair textures, manipulating sculpting with styling products, or when scrunching the hair.
So this figure right here is styling the side section with blow dryer and brush. Styling the side section with blow dryer and a brush. Styling and drying the top section. Styling and drying the top section. Finish work over the surface of the hairstyle. Follow the brush with the dryer. Create a ridge or bend the, in the hair near the scalp with the comb. Create a ridge or bend in, in the hair near the scalp with the comb. I do this, bro. I, I do this exactly. Set the ridge with heat from the blow dryer. This is a diffuser, which I already know. That's funny because I use this technique right here. This is the technique I use. Exactly this one. This one, I'm trying to understand how they even position the comb to be like that. They had to go like this. And... Oh, okay. They had to grab it from the bottom. And, and... Okay, I think so. Styling the side section with the blow dryer and brush. Building volume. Occasionally extra volume is needed in the crown, crest, or top areas of a style to create a more proportionate look. To build volume or to create an even contour throughout the hairstyle, use the blow dryer and brush in the following manner. Lift the hair with the brush, bending the section as the blow dryer is directed at the base of the section and follow through to the ends. Avoid burning the scalp. So lift the hair with the brush, bending the sections as the blow dryer is directed at the base of the section and follow through to the ends. Exactly what I do, bro. Follow the same procedure to build fullness on the sides. Use horizontal partings if the hair is to be styled down onto the sides and vertical or diagonal partings if the hair will be brushed back. So use horizontal partings if the hair is to be styled down on the sides and vertical partings or diagonal partings if the hair is to be brushed back. Braids and locks. You going to tell me how to do braids, bro? Ain't no way. Way no way, boy. This is what I really want to learn, bro. The braids and the locks. Braids and locks. The technique associated with styling the hair into braids and locks is a form of natural hair care that originated in Africa thousands of years ago. Natural hair care has gained such popularity that an entirely new division of the hair care industry has developed. Wow. So, the techniques associated with styling the hair into braids and locks is a form of natural hair care. I didn't know that it was hair care. Natural hair care has gained such popularity that an entirely new division of the hair care industry has developed. As a recognized professional segment of our industry, natural hair care is an active and exciting division that is currently advocating for education licensing and legislative changes to meet the needs of edu educators practitioners and clients so that's kind of fucked up why would i have to get a special license to be a, uh, a braider refer to the procedures 14-14 through 14-16 for guidelines on to complete braids and locks man I love, I love this chapter. I love this chapter. I don't even know how I'm going to be able to move past this chapter if I haven't grasped the information completely. I want to grasp everything from this chapter and learn it, like literally memorize it before moving to the next one. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. If maybe next week I'll go to the next chapter. Maybe I'll stay on this one again until I actually memorize it. So, braids. While there are many variations of braid, braids and braiding styles, 
on the scal on the scalp cornrows are one of the most important popular styles worn today. Cornrows require working close to the scalp across the curves of the head. Man, I couldn't I couldn't even I couldn't concentrate because my brother would be screaming right now like oh my gosh. Braids. And he's still screaming. Can y'all hear that? Can y'all hear that? Braids. While there are many variations of braids and braiding styles, on the scalp cornrows are one of the most important styles worn today. Cornrows require working close to the scalp across the curves of the head. The braid may begin at the nape, the top, or the sides, depending on the desired finish result. So these are braids. These are cornrows, actually. Cornrows, which look really cool. And these are dreadlocks, which look really cool. Um, locks, also known as dreadlocks, are created from natural textured hair that is intertwined together to form a single network of hair. So kind of like a DNA strand, nah? Locks, also known as dreadlocks, are created from natural textured hair that is intertwined together to form a single, single network of hair. Hair locking is the process that occurs when coiled hair is allowed to develop in its natural state without the use of combs, heat, or chemicals. The more coil revolutions with a single strand, the faster the hair will coil and lock. So the more coil revolutions with a single strand, the faster the hair will coil and lock. Cultivated locks are those that are intentionally guided through the natural process of locking. There are several ways to cultivate locks, such as double twisting, coiling, palm rolling, braiding, and wrapping with cord. Okay. When consulting with a client who is considering locks, you should stress the following points. Once they are locked, locks can only be removed by cutting them off. No way. Ain't no way, boy. The hair locks in progressive stages that can take from six months to a year to complete. So the hair locks in progressive stages that can take from six months to a year to complete. General maintenance includes regular shop visits for cleaning, conditioning, and re-rolling. Once the hair locks into com once the hair locks into compacted coils and may be shampooed regularly and managed with a non petroleum-based oil. Heavy oil should be avoided. Spiral the hair with the comb. Two basic methods for locking men's hair, which is traditionally shorter at the beginning of the, of the locking process, are the comb technique and the palm or finger rolling method. Roll the hair or lock between the palms. Okay. Discuss safety precautions for haircutting and styling. It is your responsibility as a barber to practice safety precautions daily in the performance of your work. Review the following reminders to meet the safety standards of a professional barber. So, it's your responsibility as a barber to practice safety precautions daily in the performance of your work. So review the following reminders to meet the safety standards. Use all tools and implements in a safe manner. Use the right tool for the job. Always use a neck strip or towel as a barrier between the cape and the client's neck. Use smooth movements when raising or lowering the chairs and seat backs. Okay. Uh, properly clean, disinfect, and store tools and implements. Avoid applying dryer heat in one place on the head for too long. 
keep metal combs away from the scalp when using heat. You keep the work area organized and clean and disinfected. Sweep the floor after every client and dispose of hair clippings appropriately. So, procedures 14-1 to 14-16. Now, it's just going to give me a bunch of tutorials, of techniques of how to cut hair. So, we're going to stop at this point. We're going to stop at this point. In this section, these procedures, we're going to take note of them tomorrow. So, we break down the information and we can actually... Uh, store more of the information in our head. So I don't want to overwhelm my head with information. We're going to stop here and we're going to continue tomorrow with this one. Now, I could take the, the Google Classroom exam now. I feel like I could take it. Um, I should at least take part one, right? So Google Classroom. Now, I think I just cut myself because I used the C. So there I am. Now, give me a second. I'm gonna go uh, handle some business. I gotta handle some business. Give me a second, I'll be back. Maybe like a minute or two. All right, all right, I'm back, I'm back. I'm back with another video. All right, so we're gonna take this quiz real quick. We're gonna see what it has in store for us. I don't wanna track my progress right now. All right, calm down, pipe down. So chapter 14, I believe it was. Chapter 14, men's haircut and styling, part one. We tried to do it last time, but uh, as you guys saw last time, uh, and by the way, this is not my real name. This is not my real name. Asking questions of the client during consultation, consultation helps you properly complete the process of envisioning. What type of hairstyle is tapered slightly higher to above the occipital? What type of hairstyle is tapered slightly higher to above the occipital? I'm going to say semi-short. With what facial shape would you direct bangs off the face and into the sides to broaden the appearance of the forehead? If you want to make it more broad, widen it. I say a diamond because it has a narrow, narrow forehead. What type of cutting line is used to create a one length cut and low elevation? So that is a horizontal cutting line, bro. What might you discover during the client consultation that may prohibit moving forward with the service? Scalp conditions. The parietal ridge is also known as the horseshoe. 
Vertical cutting lines create slope lines within a haircut. Build weight. Remove weight within the cut. Or create a stacked and layered effect. You know what? I'm going to go with D. I do think they, they remove weight within the cutting line. I really do. But I think it, it creates a stacked and layered effect more. Which of the following facial shapes is recognized as ideal shape? An oval. Medium length styles do not have a um, scalped appearance. What type of profile has a prominent forehead and chin? Uh, convex. I think, yeah, I think the convex got the prominent forehead and the chin. It's either convex or concave. With the facial shape, layered bangs brushed to the sides over the temples can give the illusion of a shorter facial shape. Oh, like oblong? An oblong? The primary taping areas of a cut are determined by the by the natural part, by the design line, by the style, by the client's preference. So I don't, it's not determined by the natural part. I don't think it's determined by the design line. I don't, it's the client's preference, I'm gonna say. What facial profile profile can appear more balanced by arranging the hair over the forehead and by adding a mustache and a close cut beard? What facial profile can appear more balanced more balanced by arranging the hair over the forehead and adding a mustache. Straight, they don't really need it. Angular might be the might be the case, bro. I'm gonna say angular. Because concave, I think I'm gonna say angular. I don't know why. Which of the following is used to establish proportionate design lines and contours? Which of the following is used to establish proportionate design lines and contours? Which of the following is used to establish proportionate design lines and contours? Partings? Guides? Which of the following is used to establish proportionate design lines and contours? Guides. Guides. What type of beard would help to fill out a narrow jaw? A fuller beard. If it's narrow, you want to give an illusion that it's fuller. D is the widest section of the head starting at the temples and ending just below the crown. Parietal ridge. A long neck can appear shorter if the hair is left fuller or longer. A long neck can appear shorter if the hair is left fuller or longer at the, at the nape. What is the average rate of growth per month? About half an inch. Refers to the quality of a form's surface. Refers to the quality of a form's surface. Weight line refers to the quality of a form's surface. Design texture refers to the quality of a form's surface. Proportion.
For what facial shape would you create some height on the top to lengthen the look of the face? A round face. A round face. With what facial profile would you use a close hair arrangement at the forehead to minimize the bulge of the forehead? Concave. That's it, concave. What facial shape has over wide cheekbones and a narrow jawline, a diamond? Or an inverted triangular? It's either A or D. I think I think it's a diamond one. It depends if if the forehead is narrow too, then it's definitely diamond. But if the the hairline where the forehead is at is just as wide as the cheekbone area, then it's inverted triangular. Has over wide cheekbones. But I think this is the key word over wide. So I'll put diamond again. What do you guys think I got? You guys think I passed at least the 80%? Let's see. Oh, 77%, bro. I got five wrong. Let's see. Envisioning, okay. Semi short, okay. Uh, what do you direct the bangs into the side? To, to diamond, okay, got it. Horizontal, I got that one. Scalp conditions, horseshoe, we got that one. Bam, bro. My initial, my my initial response was right. It removes weight within the cut. I should have just stuck to the gut feeling, bro. Oval, got that one right. Scalp, got that one right. Concave, I probably mixed those. Concave has a prominent forehead and a chin. Concave, all right. Oblong got that one. The style, that's crazy. This one's crazy. Angular. Oh, okay, I got that one right. Let's go. Reference points. What type? Full, okay. Parietal ridge, okay. The nape, okay. Half an inch, okay. Design texture, let's go. The round, okay. Oh, I got this one right too. It's concave as well. Minimize the bulge of the forehead. And it's inverted triangular. I should have, oh my God. So we're gonna take it one more time just so we can get 100% this time. Um, and we're gonna take it real quick. <laughs> oh, it has, it has my contacts, bro. I can't believe. But that's how you know this is not this is not me. This is another person in my contacts. That is not my name. I'm what I'm seeing. Alright, I'm not even gonna read it to you guys. Like I, I'm gonna read it in my Okay. We're going to see how fast we can actually complete this. And we can get 100%. We need to get 100%. If we don't get 100%, then I'm a failure. And I'm actually reading, I'm actually reading, I'm not just memorizing the, the question, like. So this is light work, I'm definitely gonna get 100%. It definitely has to be 100% because if not, 
I did not learn my lesson. This is only semi short because it's above the occipital. Like, why would you want to go above this occipital? You feel? And now, for the moment of truth, for the moment of truth, bruh, what am I gonna get? If it's not 100%. I'm ending it all, bro. This go in two minutes and 17 seconds. We completed it. 22 out of 22. Let's go. I. So, oh damn, you guys can't see anything, bro. You guys weren't able to see anything. How long, bro? Look, I was showing you guys this. I just took a test and I got 22 out of 22. I am so sorry. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't double check as to what my screen looked like. I am definitely sorry for that. But regardless, I don't think many of you guys are watching. So uh, if you do watch this live stream, it's probably at a later time in life. Uh, probably when I'm already blown up. When I'm already um, uh, advanced in my career. I don't think anybody's going to look at this right now. But it could be a possibility. So if you are, I apologize. Uh, I wouldn't. I won't make the same mistake twice. Is what I'm going to tell you. Okay. But it's been a fun day with y'all. You know, I enjoyed reading with y'all. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. Spending time with me. And um, yeah, man. We'll see. We'll see each other tomorrow to finish the chapter. Let's go.